Hey, what's up, everybody? In this video, we're going to be discussing dissociative disorders. Now, as always, on our YouTube channel, we have a whole playlist for the USMLE Step 1 videos, and I highly recommend you guys watch the psychiatry playlist just so you can learn psychiatry in order. So just watch the play playlist in sequential order, and it'll give you everything you need for the Step 1 psych portion. Now, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, let's talk about dissociative disorders. These these are conditions that involve a disruption or, uh, to a patient's memory, awareness, identity, or perception. And that's really important because these four, uh, these four criteria, memory, awareness, identity, perception, is what allows us to realize where we are and who we are. It allows us to stay attached and not disassociate ourselves from who, what, when, and where we are. And uh, dissociative conditions or disorders actually do the exact opposite. They help them disassociate. So there are four main dissociative conditions, uh, and they are going to be uh, the depersonalization or derealization disorder, the dissociative identity disorder, dissociative amnesia, and disassociative fugue. And we're going to talk about these in a little bit, but once uh, one thing to understand is that all four of these disorders could happen during or after a stressful event. That's completely normal, um, and that's when it usually happens to begin with. One, like the quintessential example of this would be someone who has gone through a, you know, a, tra a traumatic experience like sexual assault. A lot of those patients might have uh, a lot of these disorders all at once. They could have the depersonalization derealization disorder, they could have disassociative amnesia, they may even develop a disassociative identity disorder. So again, all of these happen during or after a stressful event, usually. All right. So without uh, much more general information, let's start talking about the actual disorder disorders themselves. And we're going to start with the first one, the, the depersonalization derealization disorder. So in this disorder, a patient is going to have persistent feelings of detachment or estrangement uh, from one's body, right, or perception or thoughts, or from the environment. So these are two uh, distinct different things that can happen. A person can feel detached from their selves, themselves, and that would be the depersonalization portion of this disorder. Or if they feel detached from where they are and what's happening around them, that'll be the derealization disorder. In this uh, disorder, one thing to realize is that these patients are going to have intact reality testing. And that's important because in psychosis or during a psychotic break, patients will not have uh, intact reality testing. In fact, they would have lost touch with reality. And everything for these patients feels like a dream. These are two key uh, things that help us differentiate depersonalization, derealization disorders from psychosis. Because like I said earlier, in psychosis, patients don't uh, realize what's happening. They've lost touch with reality. And for psychotic patients, everything actually feels real instead of it feeling like a dream. So that's the key uh, differences. Now, when it comes to the depersonalization portion of this, you're going to uh, see patients saying that they have a third person view of themselves. And when it comes to the derealization portion, patients are going to feel detached from the surrounding world. So the best example for this disorder could be someone who went through a traumatic sexual assault who presents in the hospital, and during the hospital, they tell you, hey, I'm seeing things in a third-person point of view, or maybe they'll tell you this after, but they'll feel, they'll say that I saw things in a third-person point of view like I was in the room looking at myself. That's showing you that they had you know, depersonalization happening at that moment, and then uh, during the actual encounter, or during the the treatment phase when you're taking care of the patient, you may realize that the patient seems kind of numb, the patient seems not really responsive, seems kind of, you know, uh, not completely there. And that means that they fully detach themselves from what's happening. And that's the derealization example for this disorder. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clear um, about what happens in the depersonalization, derealization disorder. 
So the next disorder we have is the dis disassociative identity disorder. Now a lot of you guys already know what this is. This is something you know more commonly known as multiple personality disorder. So I put this little gif from a movie called Split. I at least I think that's what it's called. Uh, but it's about a, a dude who has I think. Uh, like a hundred plus split personalities pretty much this is a split personality disorder this is more common in women and it's usually associated with childhood trauma and abuse especially especially sexual abuse so you know how earlier I said uh, a lot of times patients who have sexual abuse may develop these disorder during or after. Well, disassociative identity disorder is usually uh, a disorder that's associated with uh, a sexual abuse that occurs, um, sorry, the, the disorder starts after the abuse. And a lot of times it's a way for a patient to um, uh, cope with what happened. It's a way for them to, you know, internalize it, but also manage the, f the feelings they feel so they just disassociate their identity and kind of become a different person. This, is so, this disorder is also associated with PTSD, depression, substance abuse, borderline personality disorder, and somatoform conditions. And, it, and the presence of two or more uh, distinct identities or personality states is a key hallmark uh, diagnosis for disassociative identity disorder. Now, one thing to realize is that they have to be distinct. You have to be able to differentiate between these two identities and personas that the patient might put on. So that's disassociative identity disorder in a nutshell for you guys. Uh, the third one is disassociative amnesia or also known as uh, psychological amnesia. And that's why we got this photo right here of someone who looks like they're kind of lost, they don't know what's happening, what they're going through. Looks like a little bit of amnesia. So. In this condition, a patient is not going to be able to recall important personal information um, that cannot be explained from another cause. Pretty much this is a something that happens on its own, and it's usually subsequent to severe trauma or stress, right? There's no other explanation for it, like it's not a brain tumor, it's not um, uh, cancer, or it's not... Uh, something like that. It's more so trauma or stress that causes it. And something, an example of this would be losing a loved one, being raped, again, we talk, talked about this, or surviving a near-death experience. A lot of times this happens to patients who have near-death experiences along with PTSD. So in this condition, patients are not going to be able to recall autobiographic memories. Uh, they're not going to be able to recall past events. They're not going to know where they work, what job they had. But the difference with this amnesia is that it's possibly and potentially reversible. So you could possibly undo what's happened through therapy. So we're going to write that down because we did not write that down earlier. All right. So through therapy, you can undo this type of amnesia. And finally, and in my opinion, the most exciting or interesting uh, one of these four disassociative or deep uh, disassociative disorders, sorry, is going to be disassociative fugue. Now, disassociative fugue is kind of interesting because it refers to a state of bewildering wandering. It is a subtype of disassociative amnesia, and the reason I put this by itself is because uh, it's important to know. Uh, since you might get tested on it on USMLE Step 1, this is kind of low yield, but I thought it was pretty cool. In this case, a lot of patients who have disassociative amnesia will have the sudden urge or will suddenly end up traveling or going to a state of wandering while they're disassociated, right? They don't know what's really happening around them, but they just leave. And there are stories where people have left for you know several weeks to months. People reported them missing, and when they were found, we realized that they were just in a disassociative fugue after something bad that happened. Uh, and in this case, the onset of the fugue itself is usually sudden, and it it follows a traumatic or you know very very extreme event that pushes the patient to go into a disassociative amnesia and a disassociative fugue. And to help you guys remember that, I put this little tiny gif right here uh, of just traveling all on its own. Um, 
So yeah, those are the dissociative disorders. I hope this helped. They're very simple, very straightforward. There's not much to it. The treatment for all these is going to be therapy, um, uh, cognitive behavioral, and uh, just general psychotherapy. Uh, first line. That's the main treatment. Always remember that. And with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to watch the psychiatry playlist that's posted on the channel. And with that being said, I'll see you guys soon. Go ahead and go on to the next video.